Hi everyone. So some of the viewers have asked me to go over what it is like to work on a head shark or how to work on one. Um, for those of you who don't know what a head shock is, it's a type of suspension developed by Cannondale. It's a bit specific, or it's very specific just to, um, to them and there's very few frames other than Cannondale frames that actually will support head shock shocks. So here it is, a head shock, and as you can see, it's got the um, expansion or the cylinder part here in the steerer. It doesn't have anything, it has no stanchions down on the fork arm, so it's actually very rigid. Now, this doesn't use the same sort of uh, system that most other shocks use, in that there's um, most other shocks, there's just like a piston with a seal around it and it just moves up and down along the seal. Um, these ones actually have four um, races on the inside along which you get these linear bearings. So the linear bearings slide up and down along the races and that keeps the whole thing from rotating and it makes it pretty stiff and fairly light but it's a lot harder to work on. Um, which is why in most cases they say, oh, send it back for maintenance rather than just working on it yourself. But it's not the end of the world if you need to do it yourself. And I've been fiddling around with them for a bit and I've learned some stuff. So, um, yeah, I'll just go through a few different ones that I've got here just to kind of give an overview. This one is a bit of an older one. This is a P-Bone M. And this one is... Um, coil and elastomer which means it's got a coil for the spring and it's got an elastomer which is like a rubber for the damping. Very very simple. Um, the only adjustment you've got is there's like a screw on the end which you can adjust the tension on the spring but apart from that it doesn't really have any adjustability. That's like a generally on older or cheaper models. Then you've got this one that I was showing before. This is a Super which has 80 mil of travel it's got air for the spring and it's got an oil damper inside it. This one's got lockout, so basically you lock it out and it's just rigid, it won't move. Uh, here's an Ultra that I've got currently apart. So I'm currently trying to actually unseize this to do some maintenance on the bearings. This one's a bit um, beat up. Uh, this one is an Ultra, it's a bit lighter than the Super, I believe. Uh, 70 mil of travel, again, oil and air. And then, this is one I picked up the other day, and this is a Fatty. I am not sure of the year, it sort of be identifiable by the serial number. Um, this one has air, so we have to assume oil and air. This one has a lockout at the top as well. And uh, yeah, I just thought we could go into tearing this one down, at least a little bit, taking a look at what's going on, what we can look out for, um, and so on. So I'm just going to reposition the camera and then maybe start to dig into this and see what we can find. So, first thing we want to do is take the air out. We don't want to have any air pressure in there. Um, and this one's pretty beat up, so I might want to just, uh, pretty beat up, pretty dirty, I mean. So I'm just going to spray it down with some brake cleaner. Just give it a bit of a clean. So I'm hoping it's not too rusty. I don't really want to go in there with a pair of pliers because I could mess things up, but maybe if I go softly, got some inner tube on there, and I'm gonna just see if I can get it to turn. Okay, that is not wanting to move. I'm gonna get some uh, penetrant on it. And start from the top. Okay, 
so while that's hopefully working its way in, I'm also going to remove the boot and have a look at the actual bearing surfaces. And so, what did I miss? Just bought some old rusty tools. Currently, the process of removing the rust from them. So, with these boots, you want to be careful not to nick them, so that they can be reused, because they're not that easy to get. I mean, you can buy them, and there's a a guy in uh, China who's making restorations and making new versions of these. But uh, there's a lead time on that and there's a cost involved. If the boot is in good condition, there's no need to actually replace it. And some people like the original stuff. I'm just trying to be very careful to snip away at this without getting close to the rubber of the boot. Okay. So let's take a look. Well, that's pretty good news. The boot itself feels clean on the inside. I don't feel like tons of grit and grime. It feels like it hasn't got a hole. I'll check it for holes later on. But if you actually see inside, it's actually looking pretty good. It's a bits of marks and stuff on the races. Obviously we'll actually tear it down completely, but so far it's promising. Um, I'm going to remove this bearing later on, I don't need to remove it right now. But yes, first signs are promising. I just need to try and loosen up this. I might use my... <coughs> holder to hold the... Uh, Crank arm in place. Sorry, the crank arm. I mean the uh, fork leg. Okay. Now I'm gonna. Now I can't. Now you can't see anything. Let me just swivel it around. Okay. I basically turned this uh, bike stand into bike stand slash helping arm. Another pair of pliers with a bit more surface. I'm going to see if I can If I keep going at that, I'm going to damage it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray some penetrant in there a bit more and I'm going to leave it to sit for a while. I can't take apart the top end without removing the air pressure. That's just silly. Uh, things can um, go boom if you're not careful with air pressure in there. So until I can get this undone I'm not going to dig into it any further. I will spray some penetrant and just let this sit and I'll get back to you. Oh dear, so first bit of bad news. I got out some slightly bigger pipe wrench and um, started to slowly work the cap back and forth and I got it off but the problem is it was completely corroded onto the threads so um, yeah so the actual inflator head or cap of the shock is now damaged so I'm going to have to replace this part. It still holds air though so I can still somehow inflate it but I will need to replace that. It's this little metal part here. Um, you can get them. They, you know, either I'm going to find a sh you know, fork that's not working and use it for parts or you know, I'll see what happens. Anyway, so um, I'm just going to take the air out of it now if I can, if the valve isn't just totally stuck. 
because it did make a hissing noise before. Yeah, there we go. And it just sprayed metal everywhere. There we go. So that's the fork now decompressed. And it feels a bit grindy now that it's decompressed. We shall see. So the next part of what we're going to do is take off this top cap. Also looking a bit rusty. And hopefully it's not seized on. Oh, this one's actually coming off with the the body, which it shouldn't. So I'm going to try and... Yeah. I've got the sensation there's going to be a lot more rusty bits. But anyways, I'm going to just keep on doing it. It's going to undo the whole top section. Normally you're meant to take the cap off first. So as you can see, that's off, but the cap is still in place. So... Gonna thread it back on and try and get some uh, plus gas in there. See if I can get that released. It looks like I need a new can of plus gas. Can't believe I'm out just now. Oh, there we go. And uh, Get some of that penetrant in there. Try and get it at least into this thread so I can get this cap off. Once this cap is off, and I mean, I, I don't need to take the cap off, but it's a lot easier to take the cap off now when it's mounted than trying to take the damper out and then removing the cap. Um, just because I can clamp it onto things. I can clamp it onto somewhere like this and, and manipulate it. Um, but yeah, once I've given that some time to sit, I'm going to try to remove this bolt without rounding it out. Um, I'm going to be a bit more careful, I guess, going forward, seeing that there's already some pretty bad rust in some parts. And while I do that, I'm also going to Google around and see if I can find a replacement for that lower part that broke. So I'll be back in a moment. OK, so I'm back to see how it's going with that seize bolt. Um, I also pulled out this, this is an air cylinder from an Ultra. Um, but yeah, that's what the actual air cylinder is like. And there's this part here is pressed into the cylinder. And so you can actually press that out. Um, I actually wonder if like, you could actually machine one. It probably wouldn't be the end of the world to machine something like that, but that's what that's what broke on this one. And now I'm going to try to maybe clamp the actual... Actually, I'm going to use my vise. So apologies, you won't be able to see what I'm doing very well. It's just spinning the actual damper underneath it, so maybe I need to actually grip the damper, ah, which has its own set of complications because I need to. I haven't got a shaft grip. You need like a special shaft clamp. Anyways, we will carry on and see what we find. So this is a castle tool, and this is what you normally use to remove this inside damper. It's called a castle tool because it looks like a little castle. If you see, it's got like little turrets, spikes on it, and they engage on the teeth in the damper. Um, I can show more detail when it comes out. And first, I like to try it by hand. Why not? Nope, that's too tight, so... Going to the spike. To the spanner, ratchet. I 
This is usually where I clamp it. I'm just trying to do it in shot of the camera. There we go. So here what we're doing is we're unscrewing the damper body, the damper unit inside the shaft, inside the steerer. I'll probably just use my hand there. So, okay, it's not too bad, it's not too dirty. So what do we have? These are the, it's kind of hard to see, there's not enough light. Oh, let me, I realized I forgot to turn one of the lights on. So there's teeth there, that's engage. So once that's in, it locks into these teeth and allows you to spin this whole unit. So, that is looking okay. It's got perished rubber on the outside. This is just like a, an O-ring, but we'll take a look into that soon. Um, the other side of things, I'm gonna take the valve out, what's left of the valve. Well, the valve is there, but out of what's left of <laughs> the carrier. Uh, hopefully that will come out. Yep, that on threads. There's a little bit of remaining pressure in there. But the reason I'm, I did, I'm doing this is so that I can, well, first I'm going to change that. But secondly, I want to use some air to blow the piston that's in there out. Um, we will need to remove the hole uh, in the cylinder for this, um, to do this repair, but that will come later. So, I'm just going to grab a shock pump. There's not much of a thread to engage with anymore, it's all kind of rotted away. I'm hoping that I can get a tiny bit of thread engagement on there and I'm going to put a piece of cloth in the end to catch anything that comes out because it's going to come flying out there. That's really not wanting to engage at all. I'm going to try It's really not any anything to work with, really. Every time I try and put air into it, it just leaks out because there's just not enough body. The whole thing is just rotted away, which is very frustrating. <laughs> okay, second option is just to uh, push something through. Actually, maybe I could just take the whole pin off. There's a C-clip here, which you can remove to take this whole piece out. So I might actually do that. So in here, there's a, there's a little seal and there's a C-clip. So you push this into the body, then you can access the C-clip, pull the C-clip out, then this whole piece will just slide out. And for that, you want to put a, I actually use a, this is actually a tool for removing um, some type of free hub, but I hardly ever use it. Doesn't get much use other than the fact that it actually fits on pretty well onto here. So 
I'm going to give it some taps with the mallet. Okay. Yeah, that was pretty crusty. Uh, don't know if you can see there. It's very, very crusty in here. So I'm going to spray that with some uh, brake clean. I'll be right back. Try not to inhale too much brake clean inside the shed. It's a very small space. So now I've got the uh, seal clip exposed. I can, uh, it's kind of hard to do this on camera, to be honest. Okay, so uh, I am starting to see light at the end of the tunnel. I've got the uh, the clip now coming out of the ridge. Sorry, I just turned some lights off. It's it hot in here. So I've got the. C-clip now coming out of the ridge and so I can just work it round and it'll come pinging off so I just need to there we go so that's the clip which you actually have to replace supposedly and Well, this one's messed up anyway, so I'm just going to use a pair of pliers. See, of course that's not moving. So I'm going to... Get some uh, plus gas in there. Get that moving around, loosen it up a bit. Normally I would actually screw in a um, this tool which is for well it's for you know dealing with tire valves um, and so you can actually just thread it in to the end of that and just like use it to pull the thread out but since there is nothing in there um, for me to grip onto I don't have that option. Alternately, you could tap it through from the other end, but you need to remove the piston. So, uh, I guess I'm back to filling up my tubeless air canister with a bit of air and then just giving it a little blast and seeing if that'll pop it through. That breaking off is really annoying <laughs> for so many different reasons. Okay, so. I'm going to pause the video while I inflate the tubeless um, tank, so it takes, makes a bit of noise, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've just inverted this and I've put a plastic container underneath to catch the piston if it comes flying out. And I've got my tubeless 
air canister thing. I'm just going to pop it over as well as I can. And I'm just going to open the valve. I've only got like 40 psi in here. Let's see if this does the job. Just pressing it down so I can get a bit of a seal. Didn't do much. Other option is I'm going to connect this um, extension hose, see if I can get the extension hose to at least seat a little bit. Then I can try giving that some air without doing anything to the hose to the end of the hose. So, very carefully put this one back in the clamp. And I'm going to carefully try to inflate this end, not touch that end, and see what happens. And I might just, I'm going to inflate the uh, air tank again. Okay, so very carefully connect this on. There we go. That was just enough. That there be one piston. So now I can see. Oops. Now I can see the end of the shaft, and I can insert something long with a bit on the end and push it down into there. Yeah, it seems to have uh, got itself nicely uh, wedged in, but seeing that that part is going to be have to be replaced anyways, I don't mind giving it a few taps. So Now you'll see the end of the piston. Piston, sorry, cylinder. So that's the cylinder out. And there you can see the snapped off end. I'm going to have to soak this in some stuff to get that apart so I can take that end out of the, uh, out of the cylinder. But that's now effectively a empty bore, if I can, oh, there you go, you can see down it. And, um, now the actual races, needle bearings, they do need maintenance, if you, I can feel the roughness of them. It's not horrendous, it's not like, um, one that I did the other day, which it just wouldn't even move. But yeah, this definitely needs work, but I can do that in a different video because 
this part here is about just taking apart the damper, which we can do now. So obviously in most cases you wouldn't have to deal with, with this. The, if you've maintained your head shock, you would have taken this off and cleaned it up and pumped it up every now and then. Uh, obviously this one was not cared for. So you wouldn't even have to remove this normally. I'm removing it because I have to now, but uh, normally you would just do maintenance on the, um, the damper and that's it. So this damper being very similar to some other dampers I've worked on, um, I can tell you it's pretty straightforward. It's got a purge um, screw on the side which basically allows you to get all of the air out. Um, this has to be completely full of air to properly lock out. Uh, right now I can feel and I can hear. It's not. It's got bubbles in it. You can hear the cavitation. One of the other things we're going to... If I need to actually rebuild the uh, replace the, uh, the seals on the inside, which I probably will, then I do need to take the cap off because I need to be able to hammer out the inner shaft. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the oil out of here so that um, I can get started with the process of anything else I need to do. The oil is going to need to be changed. And for that I've got this uh, Park Tools SPA1. Um, one thing I did do was I filed down the inside edges because they had a sharp ridge. They have a sharp ridge on the outside. But what you don't want to do is when you're manipulating these parts that you need to undo, you don't want to score the actual shaft. Um, you can also put some tape around to, uh, to alleviate that, but uh, I found that by Filing it down nice and smooth, it's generally enough. I'm removing the little damper, sorry, the um, relief screw, which will start to leak out some oil, but not too much. Once I start to undo this, it will free flow a lot more. Um, and so basically I'm just holding it with my hand and it's actually easier to keep the, this in place and turn it than to try and turn the tool. There's less likelihood of you scratching the shaft. So this, you, I can already see there's lots of gunk. I think it's undone. Let's see. Yep. Oh yes, that's pretty filthy. Okay, so I'm not sure what happened there. Halfway through recording this uh, tear down, it just stopped recording. So, yeah, I'm not going to do a purge uh, replacement of oil in this and getting it back going because I need to do other fixes. So, there's no point in me wasting oil doing that. And there's plenty of videos about how to actually replace the oil in this, but at some point I will. Uh, if you were just, you know, doing a service on it, that's what you do. You replace the oil in this, get it back in, tighten everything up, um, so on. You probably would want to change your O-rings. Um, but yeah, I know this is a bit left field for what's normally like uh, gravel cycling, etc. But, you know, it's an area of mechanics and cycling that I'm interested in. If you aren't interested, I mean, feel free not to watch it or put a thumbs down or whatever. Um, if you are interested, thumbs up. Uh, just write a comment if you want to know about one of these things. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be going through some more teardown of the shock itself at some point. And uh, you can uh, follow along with that if you're interested. I will probably be doing a full 
um, nasa needles, needle bearings, races, etc. replacement on the shock. And depending, I might maybe upgrade this one depending on its travel. I haven't checked the travel. I could put in a DLI 80 which has rebound on it. Um, I might have one lying around. If it's worth it, I don't know. Um, I'm going to take a look into that as well. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching so far this uh, chaos that I've inflicted upon myself. And um... at this point, my camera died on me again. Um, if you want to see more of these sorts of things, and I will be doing a full teardown, uh, subscribe and leave a comment if you are interested in seeing one particular part. Thanks for watching.